What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards. Here for our world-famous impromptu live stream. See how long I go for for this one. Uh, I have a little bit of a headache, but I had some free time, and I have not done a live stream in a while. So I figured we would pop on real quick just to see what is going on. Answer some questions. Uh, once again, per usual, when I do these, there is no real set topic. Just kind of let chat take us wherever chat takes us. What is going on, Kyle? And uh, yeah, just answer some questions, hang out for a little bit. Uh, like I said, I probably will not go as long as I typically do. Usually I do these, I start talking, and next thing you know, two hours has passed. Uh, but I do have a little bit of a headache tonight, so we shall see where we go. Uh, just the vamp while chat fills up for a little bit. Uh, the next two videos are recorded. I'm going to tomorrow morning uh, talking about the PSA update that was posted today. And then Friday morning uh, talking about the PSA doom and gloom that is the backlog. I also had another PSA order pop that is shipping back to me now. So that should be here on Saturday. That was a six card express order from March. Well, actually February got checked in in March. Um, so that will be upcoming as well. Maybe we'll do a, uh, maybe that'll be Saturdays. Well, I was actually not supposed to get here till Saturday. So that probably won't be up till next week sometime. So I see people popping into chat. If anyone has questions, feel free to get them posted and I will begin answering them. Uh, and we'll just kind of kind of go from there. Uh, I did get a chance to. I posted about it in the community tab. Um, I checked out Card Collector 2's new shop today. Ryan from Card Collector 2. Uh, I swung in there. I didn't have a ton of time. I didn't have any camera equipment. I didn't. You know, it's the second day open. I didn't want to walk in there with a bunch of cameras and stuff um, and be that guy. But I just popped in. Just wanted to check it out. Get the lay of the land. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, really, really nice. Wish I lived much, much closer to it than what I do. It's not like super convenient for me just to run there or anything crazy like that. So, but he did a really nice job setting that place up. When cards checked in, how long does it take after that? It all depends on what you paid for. What do you think a mid grade 61, 69, and 70? Boy, I am not familiar with vintage basketball at all. What are your thoughts on Gary V's NFTs? I'm not an NFT guy, period. I don't care who's making them. Just not my thing. I like things I can touch. Um, I think D'Angelo Russell is what he is. We know what he is. He's not a... I don't want to say he's not a very good basketball player. I mean, he could score, but he's not... I mean, how do I want to... He's not a winning basketball player. Uh, in my opinion. What is the catalyst cards for Kobe to start moving up again? Is the Hall of Fame weekend too obvious? In my opinion, yes. No one's going to be shocked that Kobe's going into the Hall of Fame. There might be a little bit of movement there. Here's the problem with the Kobe Hall of Fame thing, in my opinion. Maybe this doesn't go this way. Maybe it does. I don't know. Um, Everyone and their sister that wants to sell Kobe cards... Is, not everyone, but most people that want to sell Kobe cards are holding them for Hall of Fame weekend. So in my opinion, any adjustment in price that goes up from demand increasing is going to get washed out from supply increasing because everyone's waiting to sell at Hall of Fame weekend thinking prices are going to go up. So my guess is a bunch of cards are going to flood the market that weekend and any increase in demand is just met by increase in supply and we don't see that big of a price change. That's just my thoughts on the matter. I could be completely wrong. Select do does look loaded. I have not ripped any myself personally. I just, you know, all I know is what I've seen on like 502 Frank open up and Pac-Man cards. Um, I haven't watched like any quote unquote true breaks of them from anyone. Um, 
but I know 502 Frank was pulling a lot of fire out of select retail. I thought about maybe trying to get a cello box to rip just for the hell of it. Um, but then quickly changed my mind on that. I just don't feel like going through the hassle of grading anymore. It's such a pain. How's Marvel Universe doing? Um, not bad. Prices have come down. That is to be expected. I, I've sold through. So this is what I have left. Uh, I have sold through a decent portion of the order I just posted about. So I still have the 10 left. Uh, I have a nine patch left. Don't know what the camera's doing. There we go. Nine patch left. Uh, nine yellow suit Wolverine left. An eight Hulk and my PSA six X-Men that I'm going to hold into. I'm going to hold on to this one. This is just not worth selling. Uh, and I actually like the card. So I'm going to keep that one. The rest of them I am still trying to sell. The PSA 9s, I have been regularly getting about 100 to 125 bucks for. I paid 50 to grade them, so that's fine. Uh, I've had a fairly a few fairly decent offers on this, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on this yet. So. But so far, so good with the Marvel stuff. I have the six card express order I have out is also Marvel related. Let me set Wolverine. I had Wolverine sitting back up there. I, I kind of don't want to sell that. It's a really nice looking card. Do, 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 do. do you think the vintage basketball cards have reached all time peak for a few months? Have reached their bottom? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't follow the vintage market that closely. Does market movers also work BGS and SG? I assume you mean SGC or just PSA. Uh, market movers has PSA, BGS, and SGC loaded in it for graded cards. Uh, they do not have HGA or CSG yet. Uh, I don't have a huge budget, so I'm thinking of waiting for the people who don't make the playoffs and stockpiling cheap PSA 9s. What would you recommend? I'm also looking, picking up a little. Uh, that's not a bad play. If you're on a budget, go look for, like, you know, your Darius Garland's, your Shy Gilgis Alexander's. Um, you know, those sorts of players, Colin Sexton, uh, and guys after they get eliminated, you know, keep an eye on where their prices fall. The only thing I would warn you about is, uh, you know, uh, prison base is just scary right now. You know, no one wants prison base right now. The prices just keep going lower and lower, at least on anything 2019 and or 2018 and newer. Uh, so, you know, maybe try to get some parallels or go for select or something, but that could be tricky if you're working on a budget. Uh, you know, I was just thinking about expected value of a hobby box. I think it's too hard to say because you're not like. I mean, uh, on average, you're going to lose money every time you rip a box, probably a lot of money, especially with grading the way that it is. But I don't know that everyone's really figured out true expected value because you could just completely whiff on a box where as like, you know, ripping a box of Magic the Gathering, you're guaranteed X number of um you know rares versus uh epics or whatever they're called i forget now uh have you considered doing a video on your investments that didn't pan out actually yes i have i've just recently funny like dead serious funny you bring that up um i was just thinking about doing like my top worst five buys of the year so far or something it would be headlined by Des deshaun watson uh, i've told that story uh, on channel a couple different times. Uh, what are your thoughts on PSA eight? As long as it's really old stuff or really high end stuff, they're fine. I've personally considered a PSA eight tops Chrome LeBron 2003, because that's what's in my air quotes budget. But I think I might just kind of save up and maybe make a play on a nine. I don't know yet. I would prefer nine, but I mean, some of the super high end stuff and eights, you know, valuable, but it would have to be something older, not modern. Not a problem, Philly. Uh, anything modern, eight's going to sell for raw. Like anything, anything remotely modern, a PSA eight, like a Luca or a Zion, just assume raw pricing just about.
Uh, on the Tim Duncan question, I mean, I would just sell it and put the money into something else. Like those vintage guys, it's weird on how the market moves on them because they're retired. So you need essentially like the older retired players. They're basically going to slowly go up or stay flat unless someone hypes or pumps them. Uh, or someone hypes and pumps someone else that causes Tim Duncan to go up. Tim Duncan went up, was a trickle-down effect of Jordan skyrocketing, which pulled LeBron along, and then LeBron pulled along all the other 90s goats. So, I mean, you were in the card for 10 bucks, you paid to grade it, you're going to turn a nice profit regardless what you sell it for. Make the money, take the profit, and then move it into something else and flip the next thing. You know, there's no telling when old stuff like that pops off. It's completely random for the most part anymore. Kobe 96 tops a buy now for Hall of Fame ceremony and potential documentary later. I don't like banking on uh, awards and or documentaries. The Jordan doc was a once in a lifetime thing, in my opinion. No cards are going to move like they did with the Jordan documentary. That was a completely different world we were all living in. There was no live sports on. Now documentaries come out and most people don't care. I I absolutely think football still has a ton of room to grow before the season. You probably shouldn't do breaks. Breaks are fine as long as you understand what you're doing. Like, and by what I mean by that, if you're going in it knowing that you were straight gambling And that's what you've set this money aside for. You know, if you would have just taken that money and go pull a slot machine, doing breaks is 100% fine. Doing breaks to make money in sports cards, as in buying into breaks, that's not smart. Like I said, breaks are fine. It's just, what are you trying to do in the sports card world? Are you just trying to have some fun? Watch some people rip some packs for you? Perfectly fine. If you're saying, hey, I want to turn my $1,000 into $2,000 playing around in the sports card market, buying in the breaks is not the way to do it. Talk a little about when you think top 100 basketball players will get up to the value of these new players. They won't. The new players will just fall off. It's as simple as that. I mean, go look at some of the prices that guys are going for now, like fringe guys. You know, like, uh, I don't know, like Colin Sexton, uh, Kobe White, et cetera. Look what they were going for at the start of the season compared to now. The old players don't catch up to the new players for the most part. The the new players just tank in pricing. That's why you only want to hold the truly great players long term, like or who you think can be truly great. Like, you know, of current players to me, in my mind, that's Luca Tatum, Giannis, and I think I'm adding Michael Porter Jr. to that list and John ja Morant. I've taken Trey Young off of it. I've replaced Trey Young with MPJ. You ever sell eBay auction or all buy it now best offer? I mix and match. Just depends. Depends on the card. Depends on the market. Depends what's going on in the world. Uh, I was at Card Collectors to a new shop today. Um... I forget what time it was. It was this afternoon. Probably around one o'clock, two o'clock, one thirty. It was one o'clock. It was right around one o'clock, actually. Uh, I popped in. I was only there for about 10 minutes. I did not have a ton of time. I just wanted to check it out. Actually, I just grabbed a pack of sleeves and a thing of top loaders. Uh, talked to Ryan for a real quick minute just to say, hey, uh, and then went on my merry way. Uh, I was going to shoot some video and stuff, but I didn't have any of my stuff with me. I was going to just do it on the iPhone, but I didn't have any, I didn't have a tripod. It was just, and I didn't want to bug Ryan with it. Um, we don't really know each other or anything. And I didn't want to be like, Hey, can I come in here and shoot video uh, on like the second day his shop is open? So I have a PSA sub out with him. I think what I'm going to do when the PSA sub comes back through Ryan, uh, I may take the camera down and do record the reveal there or maybe go live or something in the shop with the PSA reveal. We'll see. I'll run it by Ryan first to make sure he's okay with it or whoever's working on that before I just do it. Um, Luca and his NBA hoops, optic slash Don Russ rookies, PSA nines are good. Yeah, sure. Uh, I prefer optic over everything you listed there. 
Uh, I think optic of the lower end stuff, uh, optics, the best one to go with and optics clearly above Don Russ and hoops. Uh, and I think PSA nines are perfectly fine. I've made plenty of videos talking about PSA nines are perfectly fine plays. If you try crossing over a BGS nine, five with all four nine, are you guaranteed a PSA 10? No, you are absolutely not guaranteed a PSA 10. If you true, try to cross over a true gem, I really wanted to cross over. So I have this Giannis. Uh, I wanted to cross this over really bad. It has two tens, a nine, five and a nine, but the nine is on corners. This was back before all the PSA changes. I came so close to trying to cross this, uh, but I did not want to crack it with two ten subgrades. Uh, and I figured there would be no chance this would cross with a nine. So in a BGS slab, it sits and it, it whoops and it taunts me. It vexes me. Does it make any sense to buy Juan Soto or is baseball just expected to go down all season unless he hits three home runs? Uh, I think you are partially correct on that. That being said, I 100% have my eye on Juan Soto prices. Uh, I would love to buy more Soto. Um, once again, I fully believe in the new method of the cheapest time to buy a player may actually be in season for his current season at some point. So I have my eyes very closely on Soto. If they reached a certain point, I would probably make a move. I'm really torn right now between there's a lot of stuff I want to buy. You know, I picked up the Luca Premier not that long ago and save money to have a nice stash to go into the national for. Problem is, I don't know if the national is going to happen. Uh, there was some positive news about Illinois opening things up uh, as soon as early July. So that would be in time for the national. So I'm trying my best to keep my powder dry by June 1st when they said they would update on the national versus going out and buying a bunch of stuff. Uh, but it's really hard. <laughs> uh, I have a million things on my eBay watch list. I have been selling a lot of stuff, actually. Uh, I've been moving off, trying to downsize some inventory to move into bigger cards. But I'm trying to get a nest egg together for the national. Uh, as best as I possibly can. What's up, Ziggy? Does Burrow seem too cheap still? Burrow almost lost a leg last year. I think all last year's rookie quarterbacks are actually overpriced to a degree. I shouldn't say over. They're overpriced to carry into season. I would sell. Once again, I am fully on board with the sell all football before the football season actually starts. Uh, I mean, I don't disagree with you birds on the bat regarding the 10 modern base, but there's, I mean, PSA nines give you a slight premium uh, and a lot of people, PSA nines, like a lot of people buy PSA nines that are new into the game because it's a cheaper price point to enter. So usually they go up the same percentage as a 10. You just have a capped ceiling. Are you buying any star stock? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I'm currently sitting on. Uh, what is my current star stock portfolio? Uh, my current estimated portfolio value is about thirty three hundred bucks. Give or take. Uh, I'm currently slowly once again waiting out the star stock game. Uh, I got a couple weeks. Probably still to go on the nine hundred to a thousand cards that I sent them. So I'm, I'm trying to keep my powder dry there as well because I want all those to get uploaded so I can sell a bunch and then just kind of see where my account sits and then maybe make some plays on some bigger cards. Holding or dumping your 90 Marvel 10s. I've been selling most of them. I never got in. The whole point of the Marvel stuff for me was to rip the boxes that I have, grade them, and sell them. I'm actually more interested in keeping the 9s. Uh, more for that is more strictly from a collecting aspect. I do not think I think the nines will hold fine value for the premium premier characters. They're going to float around 100 bucks, uh, probably 60 to 100 dollars, depending on the character. Uh, I think tens will probably settle in anywhere from 400 to 800, depending on the character. So like the Wolverine 10 here in the back, like this is absolutely for sale. I would absolutely 100 percent sell this. I wouldn't I would hate kind of letting it go. 
Um, because I really like the way this card looks. I just think it's just a fantastic looking card. I think it's one of the best looking cards in the set. Uh, but I would I would let this go. I had a nine that I was planning on keeping, but someone reached out to me, uh, one of my viewers, and wanted to buy the nine, so I sold it to him for a deal. Do 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 do. do. Is there a way to rank equivalent grades between companies? Um, I think I kind of understand what you're asking. Essentially, the rankings tier is BGS Black Label, BGS 10, PSA 10, SGC 10, BGS 9.5, PSA 9. Then below that, I would put BGS 9 and SGC 9 about neck and neck. They both they both almost sell for raw practically or slightly above. Unless it's a huge card. And then HGA and CSG 9.5s are still way too all over the place. There's just not enough data yet. If you had to pick the best QB to hold all season, Tua, Burrow, Jalen, or Herbert? Um, If I had to pick one, Jalen, because he's the cheapest entry point price-wise. I don't know that he's the best, but the fact that I could get into him for less than any of the other guys mitigates my risk. If he gets killed and also maximizes my upside. Uh, I mean, it's been proven at this point. You have to go completely psycho to maintain inflated prices once the season starts. I mean, look at the data from baseball, basketball, and last year's football. The prices get so inflated in the offseason that the player has to play absolutely crazy to maintain the price. And it just doesn't happen. So at least someone like Hertz is like semi undervalued right now. So if he does ball out, there's a chance his prices actually go up. And that's at today's prices. I could see him getting a spike. I also just really like Hertz. Porzingis, a buy. Uh, Porzingis scares me just because of all the injury concerns. Um, I don't think they go deep. Maybe he does. I, I understand. I like the angle that you're taking. Like there's a chance that he could get traded and it could get popped off there. And his stuff has gotten pretty cheap. Um, so it's not like the worst play in the world. It's not something I personally would do. But, like, I get where you're going with it. Best way to talk to me one-on-one -on -one is probably to DM me on Instagram. My Instagram information is in the description for every video that I post. NBA cards have tanked on star stocks. Star stock, I went from the price of PSA nines to one third now. Uh, I think that depends on the card, big boy. But I mean, I don't know that star stock A should be priced at PSA nines, especially with grading shut down. Like, you know, part of the appeal was you buy the A's and then you sub them through star stock to grade. Well, you can't do that right now. I personally, I never bought a lot of A's on star stock, and I am at the point now on star stock where I almost only buy graded. I try to stick to graded to slabs on star stock as much as possible because one, I don't have to worry about the fickle nature of the market with the A, B and C's. And also if I need to get them out of there, I could get them shipped home in a week. If everyone has the sell before the season starts theory, we're all in for a big letdown and loot losses. I think you just got to sell sooner. You know what I mean? I'm personally I mean, it depends on what the market does, but like once 4th of July hits, I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on football. And what I will probably do is slowly start to sell it. Like once training camp opens up, I think you slowly dwindle down on your inventory, you know, hold the hold your absolutely best stuff for last. In my personal opinion, the only player well, I'm going to caveat this. The only two players I would personally hold into season on football are Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield. And the Baker Mayfield thing is because, duh. Um, those are the only two football players I want to actually hold into a season starting. And I think with Mahomes, if his price has peaked in the preseason, you could probably actually roll the dice and sell him in the summer and maybe buy him back in season for less that is a hundred percent a play
Uh, what do I think Otani's ceiling is? Uh, it's high. The problem is, is his floor is really low because that dude could just shred his arm on any pitch. That's any baseball player, really. But he has the double whammy of being both sides. Uh, the only Otani card I ever owned was the pink refractor that I bought on Starstock for 300. I just sold that last week on eBay for 425. So I currently own no Otani. Love him. He's absolutely a blast to watch, but holding his cards oof, is just a scary proposition. Thoughts on how retail will impact select hobby wax long term. I don't think we know yet, and it's only going to impact this year's select hobby still has all like the more limited parallels and stuff. And I mean, look at prism hobby, you know what I mean? Like prism has had retail releases forever and their hobby box prices do just fine. So it might affect it a little bit, but I don't think it's going to do it a ton. Uh, regarding the junk comic book stuff, you just need to check comps. You know what I mean? Do the math. How much does the book sell for and whatever grade you think it could get? Factor in whatever the grading fee is and the cost that would be for you to grade it. Would you profit? Yes, no. Allow for some wiggle room. If profit, yes, grade. If profit, no, sell raw. Just like you would have a sports card. <laughs> uh, JMI with the jokes. I did see the new Marvel movies trailer. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oop, lost, lost my place in chat like I always do. Do you think the sports card market will somewhat stabilize or keep softening? I think it depends on which sport you're talking about. Uh, I don't like right now. The football market's really not that soft. The football market's doing relatively okay. It's not like going crazy, but it's not like basketball is. Baseball is a little soft right now, depending on what the players are doing. And football is in the malaise of the, the playoffs need to happen. And I don't think the, uh, you know, it's not like every player's prices are going to go nuts in the playoffs. It's going to be the guys that play well and move on. You're basically gambling on who plays well and moves on. Sell in August football. Uh, I would say July slash August, just depending on how much you have to move up cody love the sex land rj barrett i own over 150 cards should i sell now or hold to next season uh, at this point i would wait to see what he does in the playoffs if he spikes up start selling some of them off uh, and then make your money and then you know hold some stuff in the next season do both why not both it's not all you don't have to do all of it The Mantle Maze stuff, like, I get it. I just don't know that that's for me. If I was going to buy something like that, I personally would go after um, LeBron rookies because that covers two bases for me. One, Northeast Ohio sports cards. I was a Cavs season ticket holder for years. Uh, I would like to have a LeBron rookies. So, plus, he's one of the greatest NBA players of all time. I feel pretty safe in investing in that. Um so I would probably head that route versus Mantle or Mays, personally. I'm just more of an NBA fan than a baseball fan as well. Uh, I mean, that's what I've been doing, Serious Player One. I've been selling. I sold a lot of stuff the last couple weeks, like lower end stuff, just to move out, um, build up a bankroll, and start buying higher end stuff. You know, that's how I got the Luca Premier. It was like a thousand dollar card sold a bunch of, you know, hundred dollar stuff uh, to move into that. When is eBay going to send 1099s out calendar year 2022? Um, yes. So 2023. January is when you will get a 1099 unless you bounce above their current standards. You can technically get a 1099 from eBay now uh, if you break through their current tax thresholds. Nice spill. Uh, I have not talked about the Starstock graded promo yet. There's just been other things going on. I had a couple videos pre-recorded 
Um, I may talk about that. I don't have anything planned for Saturday yet. That may end up being my Saturday video. So. Um, I think that's getting too cute, Mark, to be quite honest. If the Nuggets can win around, we'll see Diego. I'm actually trying to buy more Porter Jr. He's on my list. Joshua, you could just send that to me instead. Why do you got to send it to Starstock? Um, I did serious player. That is tomorrow's video. Uh, me talking about the PSA update. Overall thoughts on HGA. I personally haven't tried them yet. I would use that if I was going to send stuff for HGA, it would be lower end stuff. I would not send anything super high end to HGA. Just my opinion. Uh, I would try them out with some lower end stuff, see how it goes and then play it by ear until the PSA reopens back up again. Uh, I have a pile of Marvel cards I would like to send them once they open up submissions for that. So that's how I am going to try HGA out is with Marvel cards. Where are you at on Zion these days? Uh, Zion's numbers have been pretty crazy, but he's going to be sitting at home in about a week, maybe two weeks. So I actually just sold. I just sold this today. Uh, this is getting shipped out tomorrow. My last Zion prism. Uh, the only I only own two Zion cards now. Uh, this pink back here, pink camo, and I have a base Zion Mosaic PSA 10. That's it. Those are the only two Zion cards that I own. Uh, I may have something at PSA Zion related through Card Collector 2. I cannot remember. I think I have a pink camo NBA debut at PSA through them. I don't remember what was in that submission. Uh, I mean, I get the fear over select retail, but I, I think we won't know until we see how population counts kind of filter themselves out like out. I think select the play is going to be uh, club level and field level as always. But I think if you're buying select singles, go for club level, whether it's parallels, color or whatever. Try to get club level thoughts on Devin Booker. Um, I think he's probably a little underpriced, but I think most of the NBA market's underpriced right now. And I think the Suns have a decent chance to go pretty far. Uh, that's because the 21 class isn't that great, big boy, in my opinion. No, nah, you're not crazy, Steven. trade that job for a Luca or something or a Giannis or a LeBron. I, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, don't chase no hitters, kids. Uh, I've talked to the tales from the flip side guys uh, a couple times. Uh, and I do watch some of their stuff. I want to get back on Reggie collects again. I absolutely love talking to that dude. UFC prism thoughts. I just do not. I'm not in the UFC at all. I would love to give you thoughts on it, but I have none to give. And I, if I gave you thoughts, I would just be making them up. I don't want to do that. Do you think there will still be prospecting next season? Absolutely. There will always be prospecting. Put money into Trevor Lawrence or just put money into Mahomes or other proven players. Uh, if I want to invest in that, here's my my hot take on that. Uh, not hot take. I would actually invest in 21 NFL wax and not chase up quarterback. Um, take the safe approach and I would just sit on sealed wax from the 21 season. And then if Lawrence busts, there are a lot of other quarterbacks in that class. So you have a little wiggle room there. I would either do that or if you want to buy football, go with Mahomes. In my opinion. Oh, we got a super chat. I don't know who snuck it in there. It didn't pop up and tell me. 
I will get to it in a second. Com C equals a joke. Yes, they do. Or yes, they are. Top 10 NBA players of all time. I don't have time to run through all 10, but it's LeBron and Jordan one and two for me. Uh, regarding the Otani low pop, that's a tricky one. Your best bet is probably to just auction the thing off. Do you think Aaron Rodgers is leaving Green Bay? Um, I think he might be. Uh, Optic is very soon and then select will be after that. I don't remember the exact day for Optic. I think it got pushed. Isn't buying cardboard pretty absurd? Sure. Or isn't buying cardboard pretty absurd? Yeah, for the most part, you're not wrong there. Uh, a lot of people like the Sports Illustrator for kids stuff, just not my thing. Uh, same response to the UFC question. I just don't follow UFC, so any advice I'd give you would not be great. Okay. Uh, Phil gave the super chat. Let me hop to this real quick. Love your videos. Sell 2020 NFL Prism and Optic Wax in July or August or hold for the long term. Um, I would, I mean, split the baby. Once again, these, you know, you're not in absolutes unless you only own one of something. If you're going to make a nice profit off of it, sell some of it, use that money to buy something else, and then, you know, nest egg a few away uh, to hold long term. And then you cover your bases. You cash in on some to get money back to make another play. Uh, and if you really believe in the class, then you could sit some aside um, to sit on. See my video from today. Buy multiples, sell some off, and then hold a, a, a portion of it would be exactly what I would do. Just scroll back up. I don't remember exactly where I left off. I'm not sure how breakers do with the whole eBay return thing. I think that's why a lot of breakers don't sell on eBay. What am I buying on Starstock? Whatever is undervalued. I, I don't target specific players on Starstock. I just troll around and find stuff that's cheap or try to beat people when someone blows up. Uh, I am not big on 29th of anything modern non-rookie cards for the most part, like optic hollows, etc. I don't think a lot of that stuff holds value long term. Favorite NBA card of my collection. Uh, LeBron Chalk Toss right there. Or the Jaw Optic Purple Hollow. I just love the way that card looks. It's not the most valuable card that I own, but it's super sexy. And I just I'm a sucker for the, the chalk toss. Chalk toss is nothing special. It's a PSA nine. It's paper. It's not even chrome, um, but it's just this iconic card. Suns are legit, man. Uh, I agree, Birds on the Bat, regarding Wander Franco. They just haven't dropped as much as I kind of wanted them to. But I have been keeping my eye on his stuff. If you had a super high-end card, where would you sell it? I would send it to one of the major eBay consigners. Or try to sell it at a shop locally or at a show. Depending on what it is. Yeah, I mean, I agree, Aaron. You could always buy numbered cards. I'm just talking more like if you, you know, you can't get into the price point for um, numbered stuff, you know, just stick to um, club level if you're going to buy base. Any thoughts on Julius Randle? Played outstandingly this season. I don't know that I want to have a bunch of money invested into him.
What should I do with my 2019 Prism Basketball retail box? Uh, I mean, it just depends. Don't open it. That's the one thing. Either hold it or sell it. You know, I don't know what you were into it for. for. Um, you know, if you sell it, what would you do with the money? All that stuff. Uh, I like SGA as an offseason buy. I have my eyes on him and his prices. Do you think Starstock will eventually want to be all graded and no longer do raw cards? Um, I wouldn't. I'm sure in a perfect world, they would love that. I don't know that they would ever get to that point. Baker's stuff should be going up. I still think Baker's undervalued. I've been eyeing up on, on 9.6 ASM 300 Panda King. I would love a 9.8, but it is out of my price range unless you want to sell one super cheap, which I doubt you do, because why would you? It's the hottest book that there is right now. I think what the last one sold for like 6.8K or something. I mean, you can let me know your price, but it'd probably be out of my budget. You come across a 9.6, though, I, I might be interested. Just a 9.8 is so expensive right now. I think Melvin Gordon's going to get cut. Uh, I've heard stuff on all the new grading companies. Uh, Pure Graded, Black Mamba, uh, Carson's One. I'm just not... I don't know. It's fine just to get a card slabbed, I guess, but I don't know how much value I would put on them. They, any new grading company needs to prove it to me. I haven't even sent cards to CSG yet. Uh, there is no one particular comic book I'm investing in heavily. I've spread my risk around. I don't own two of any one single book. Uh, one, because the price points are kind of high and there's been so many that I wanted to get that it was either like buy a second one of something I already have or move into something else. I mean, all the high end books that I've bought, I've shown on the channel. So you should know exactly what I'm into. Um, but mostly X-Men and Spider-Man stuff for the most part. Had a 181 9.2 in hand today, but didn't pull the trigger on that. I'm sure those are not cheap. Uh, PSA 8s, unless it's old stuff are fairly worthless. PSA 8s are basically raw. They're fine for collectors. They're not going to hold a lot of value unless it's super old or super high end. Uh, you're not wrong. I love podcasts. My last 10 card order, that Wolverine back there was the only 10 that I got. Everything else was a bunch of nines. How do you decide when to take a loss on a card and sell for less? Uh, I mean, you just got to read the room and make a call. You know, when I took the loss on the Watson, it was, you know, everything looked bad, sounded bad. I could have immediately accepted an offer for 900 to get out of it and lose like 400 bucks on it. And I just said, you know what? I would rather take the $400 hit then ride this out because, you know, it depends on the situation. Every situation is different. But in that case, I knew it was probably going to be at least a year until that card rebounded in value. So would I make more money sitting on the card for a year, hoping it gets back to its previous high to sell it or just taking the loss, getting the $900 back in that case and, using that 900 to go buy other stuff. Uh, and that's what I did. And I'm glad that I did because that's actually that part of that 900, I believe, is what I used to do the Acuna first Bowman Chrome flips that the video this morning was about. So I already made my money back on that, essentially, if you want to look at it that way. It's hard. Every situation is different on that. Do I sell on my slabs? No, I need to apply. I'm a member of my slabs. I buy on there. I just haven't sold anything on there yet. Um, eBay will never lower seller fees. I think Starstock is our next best hope. Eric, what is going on? What is your pick for next year? Top three emerging players with the greatest pop and card value. 
Uh, what any particular sport or just in general? Hey, Justin, what's going on, man? Uh, when should I buy Jamal Murray when his prices bottom out? That's just one of those things that you got to. Uh, just keep an eye on it, see when his price is bottom and then buy. But here's the problem with Jamal Murray. Like, I get what you're doing, but keep in mind, he tore his ACL so late into the season. He's probably going to be out for most of the next season, too. And they're probably going to baby him when he comes back next year. Uh, yeah, Panda King, just uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram or leave a comment on a video or something. It just depends on where am I, I at budget wise. Uh, whether or not I'd be able to pull the trigger. But if you're looking to move one, at least keep me in mind. I may have one before then. It's it's one of the things I am looking for actively. Uh, it would just depend on the price. I would love a 9.8, but I'd assume you'd want six grand plus for a 9.8. And that's nowhere close to my budget. If I had a Burrow Optic Orange, the 99, would you grade it Express? If you think it could 10, yes. I think that's worthy of an Express. You and me both, Leon. You and me both. Any news on how CSG is selling? Uh, I tried to do some research on that for an upcoming video. It's just so inconsistent right now with them. Uh, but I would like to do something comparing them and HGA prices. It's just the cards people are submitting to them are not like super mainstream stuff. So it's hard to get good comps. Like there's not a lot of base prism Zions going to them. That's always my go to for doing grading comps because there's a million of them in every slab, but there's not a million of them in CSG and HGA. So it's just a little trickier. And when you don't have very many sales, it's hard to get like an actual accurate take. Who AF 15, my Lord. Uh, it's a lot simpler than you think Diz. how I clean my Marvel cards. Uh, do I have one laying around here? Yes, I do. Hold on one second. I try not to wreck everything on my desk uh, right here. Microfiber cloth. That's it. I order a pack of these about every three months from Amazon. I just get a fresh pack. I don't even bother washing them or cleaning them. I use them for a while and then I just toss them. Uh, you get a three pack for like 10 bucks or something. I don't remember. Uh, and then I just wipe them down front and back. And then drop them in a penny sleeve. That's it. Nothing crazy. When we see NBA cards going up for playoffs, it's all going to come down to who plays well in the playoffs at this point. Um, I'm sure that I have Jonas. I don't know that I remember one off the top of my head, but. AF 15 at a reasonable price just does not go into the same sense. I think you could buy Brady at any time as long as this stuff's not astronomically like peaked out like it was right after the Super Bowl. No, PSA does not send you email updates. You have to keep checking, Justin. Uh, I mean, I would rather always have graded PMGs versus raw PMGs, to be honest. At least then I know what I'm buying. The eBay tax invoice is different than a 1099. That's just they're sending you that for your personal records, whether you need it or not. Depends on if you break the 1099 limits. Ooh, AF15 for 3250. Jelly. The only updates I usually get email wise is just that your order has been received and then that your grades have popped. I've never gotten one that says it's gone from like grading to QA2 or whatever. I have a grand to invest. Where should I go? Got to do your homework, Nick. Get out the TI-86 plus and do some calculations and do your thing. It's up to you. I'm not here to spend your money. Uh, I think Ultimate Fallout 4 
could get to 5K, but it's going to take him appearing in a movie for that, to be honest. I think it's going to hover around 3K, uh, and then it'll pop off if he shows up in a trailer for something. Sorry, just checking something really quick. Um, do you think it's a massive mistake by CSG, CGC to not accept Marvel cards? Here's the problem. They're getting slammed right now with sports cards and Pokemon and Magic that they can't keep up with that. So I don't think they want to be the go-to for Marvel cards, to be quite honestly. To be quite honest with you. Vending at card show tips to move the most product. I've never set up at a card show, so I might not be the right person to answer this, but I will tell you from someone that shops at a card show, what I would like to see is your stuff priced and your stuff priced under comps, to be quite honest. I don't I rarely use one touches. Favorite bench warmer card. It was KPJ. I don't know who it would be now. Probably Nikhil Alexander Walker. No, nah, I think that's a waste of time, Pop. BGS just does not hand out tens. They have CSG is CGC is not losing any money right now. Marvel Madness. I get what you're saying, but they are literally getting buried right now. I can bear They can't keep up with what they have for sports cards and non sports cards. Uh, I am not a Tyler hero believer. So. Uh, Wander's first Bowman is 2019, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, Justin got it 2019. I thought it was 2019. Uh, I'm not a big believer in your mom, Mercedes. Are you going to Dallas this month? Uh, Flipping Steve, what's up? Um, I don't think so. It came together to last minute. Uh, Dustin asked me the same question because he said you guys were doing a big thing. If if. I knew the national was going to get canceled. I would make Dallas work, but I think I am now optimistic. The national is going to happen. So I just don't know that I could pull off Dallas on this short of notice. Message me offline with what hotel and stuff you guys are staying in for Dallas. I'm not completely ruling it out of the thing, but. I get time off work and stuff, no problem. I can book a last-minute flight. That's no problem. It's just, I don't know. It would be a lot this close to last minute. But I would like to go and hang out with all you guys. But I will definitely, if the National happens, I will 100% be at the National. Uh, I am interested in the X-Men metal set that's supposedly supposed to come out that's been delayed 18 times. Buxton might be the real deal. I, I mean, you know, like he was a high pedigree prospect and, you know, had all the injury concerns and had problems and looked bad. And maybe he's just, you know, a late bloomer. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with either one, Fisher. Plus, isn't your mom Mercedes like 97 years old? I'm just not a sealed wax guy. It's just not my thing. If I have sealed wax laying around, I just end up opening it when I get bored. The only sealed wax I have is I have some marble boxes. If I turn around behind me, I have one box of 90, one box of 91, the legendary now, absolutely legendary box of G.I. Joe cards. Uh, and I have two 91 Jim Lee X-Men boxes. I, 
I think between six hundred and eight hundred dollars is about the right price for PSA tens. Yeah, hit me up, flipping Steve. Like I said, I, I just don't know that I can pull off Dallas in like two weeks now without having planned it already. Uh, are you going to the national, Steve? Or do you not know yet? Lubob stuff's gotten pretty cheap. Yeah, like you can make a ton of money with wax. It's just not my style. I would rather buy comic books than wax. Have you seen current prices of Daniel? Oh, yeah, trust me. I've seen the current prices of uh, Donovan Mitchell rookie stuff because I bought a bunch of it right before he turned turned his ankle. So, yeah. Uh, I believe Lubob at a certain price point would be a buy, uh, but you're probably holding until January, February, or March to sell because uh, he's probably going to miss most of the season. Same with Eloy. I'm just not banking on those guys playing this year. Um, I think... So with select still being new, it's probably going to go down for a little bit until it levels out. And your bank account, Justin. All right, I'm probably going to wrap up here fairly quickly. I've been going for about an hour. My headache has dulled some, but it still exists, and I've caught up on chat. Um... Trying to think of anything. Smash the like button for sure. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, use the eBay affiliate link, guys and girls. If you want a very easy, if you enjoy anything that I do or have ever done, and you want a very simple way to help the channel, anytime you go buy something on eBay, just use the affiliate link. That simple. Click a mouse button. If I have ever put out content or helped you in any way, People are sleeping on DK Metcalf. NFL position players are just a weird thing, man. Uh, no, I think Starstock is my second choice behind eBay for buying and selling right now. I have bought and sold way more on Starstock the last this year than I have eBay. Most people just read the comics digitally now, Beckman, Beckett man. That's what I do anyway, but I only buy graded. I haven't bought raw to grade. Oh, nice. I just don't know that the Marvel anime holds long-term value. I love the look of the set personally. I thought about buying a box just to rip for fun, but uh, I just don't know the values there. Uh, it's not hard to become an uh, Amazon eBay affiliate. You just apply and they approve you or not. It's just a matter of whether or not you actually have traffic that will use it. Ideally, they want you to link to specific products, but I try to, as much as possible, avoid recommending specific cards. I like for my viewers to make their own decisions based off of their own homework or, you know, I usually try to show the work, if you will as much as possible. So I just made the eBay affiliate link just bland. It just takes you to the eBay homepage. Uh, they absolutely could. It just depends on if the artist is popular or not. I've never sold anything on Amazon. I'm just not big on the modern Marvel stuff. Uh, I do. It is um, It's in the description of the video. I forget what it is off the top of my head. Hold on one second. I think it's Neo underscore sports cards. Uh, it's just Neo sports cards. Uh, and then you get a $10 bonus. You get 10. I get 10. We all get 10. There is not a star stock app, but the website works pretty well on mobile. I use it all the time. Yep, 
That's it. Peyton's fine. I just don't see his stuff spiking way up. Uh, probably because he hasn't been playing very well. Do you think retail will go exclusively online? Um, I do at some point in time. I just don't know that these stores want to do it anymore. Uh, Luca, in my mind, is always a buy. Uh, there's a rumor going around that Walmart's pulling all sports cards, but that is a rumor only. I saw some stuff on Facebook, but I don't know how truth it is. There's just tons of stuff I want right now. I want to buy more Baker. I want to buy more Luca. And I have a list a mile long of comic books that I want to buy. And I want to save money up for the national. Supposedly, people said that Target figured out the bot problem. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't tried. Uh, I get the whole stacking theory. The problem is, is the NFL position players just don't usually carry a ton of value. They're too up or down week to week. And, and myself personally, I don't want to carry any football in the season anyway, so it doesn't matter. Any value going to these card shows or just getting together with other collectors? Uh, I mean, you can absolutely get deals if you want to dig through dollar boxes and stuff. That's not my scene. Uh, I go mostly to trade. Um, I like going just to get the vibe of the room, if that makes sense. I think you could pick up a lot of random stuff just from walking around, listening to background chatter, you know, just kind of like what the general mood is, what people's thoughts are, what dealers are talking about, what buyers are talking about, you know, what cards people are constantly asking about as you walk around the show floor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there was a comic show not too far from me, but I heard it wasn't that great and I didn't know that it was going on. Good job, NU Collector. Uh, I mean, they're awesome cards. I don't own any of them. I mean, if you're buying into certain players, they're 100% plays. Like, Kabooms and Downtowns are absolutely awesome. But they're just super rare. I try to stick with more of, I don't want to say the common man stuff, but like, you know, I, I don't know that Many people are going out buying PSA 10 kabooms and downtowns they are super expensive. I feel like most people are in the, you know, like this range of stuff, you know, like Acuna Chrome's base, you know, a, a Luca select base for a thousand. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Those sick kabooms and downtowns are awesome. But like a PSA 10 of certain players are like five, ten thousand dollar cards in some cases. Uh and there's absolutely a marker for that if you got the money to put into that kind of stuff. But I feel like most of my audience is in this range of things, not the kaboom range of things. Uh, where do you find a list of sports card shows? I find most of them on Facebook. I just search for local events. And then once you kind of find your local ones, then you can kind of get the schedule down. Breaks aren't a scam crazy. You just crazy Kev. They're not, they're not scamming you. You just have to know what you're signing up for. Uh, I usually go to 130. Well, I usually use market movers first, and then I use 130 point as a backup. Uh, you have to pay to set up a table, but you can absolutely just carry around your cards and sell to dealers. Nine times out of 10, if a dealer sees you walking around with a case over your shoulder, they will ask you if you're selling or not. Most of my audience is mainly in retail. No, I mean, like most of my audience is probably in the five hundred dollar to a couple thousand dollar cards. I don't know for sure. I honestly don't know. I'm just assuming.
Yeah, buy just buy the cards that you want. All right, guys and girls, I'm going to hop off here. Thank you all for hanging out for the last hour or so. Um, yeah, there's Justin's regular Eternals thing. So uh, let's see, rest of the week. I think I mentioned this earlier, but just to give you guys and girls a quick preview. Uh, PSA update video tomorrow morning. Just talking about the update that they put out today. PSA backlog thoughts video on Friday. Uh, and I don't know what's going on for Saturday yet. Uh, and then Sunday, the weekly show, obviously. Uh, and then I don't know if I'll do a live stream next week or not. I have a very busy week at work next week. Um, so I would not, I don't know that I'll be able to hop on for a live stream, but we shall see. So everyone have a great week into the weekend. Uh, smash the like button on your way out the door. Go buy some stuff on the eBay link. If you're not a member of Market Movers, I don't know what you're doing with yourself. Uh, there's a referral code and a coupon code for that down at the bottom. Uh, all that other stuff that's down there in the, I feel like a QVC sales host talking about the 8,000 things in my YouTube description box. Uh, but yeah, check all that stuff out. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.